All right, here we enter turn six over on the uh, Pax Romana. We have a kind of an interesting situation, which I think is a little cheap about the game, but we'll see, we'll see uh, you know, what, what other opinions are in terms of reaction. So we're in a situation where I'd say everybody feels about equal, but income-wise, the East has a lot more money than anyone else, and they were actually able to build themselves a ridiculously large army, and this is sort of the hidden placement thing, but not just. They managed to spend some 20 talents. Remember, they had saved some up from last turn. They built a humongous force here. We got 10 heavy infantry there, plus more or less what was kicking around there, which is four or five, pretty fair force in and of itself. And they also built a couple new cav, uh, getting themselves up to four cav. Greece, especially with their little die roll penalty, Oh, speaking of which, I'm going to buy myself a, another objective with each of these. That was something I planned. i got to figure those out in a moment. But uh, Greece had very little money. And they basically had to build up an army, I think it's uh, three heavy infantry, to try to defend Athens against this one marauding force of Carthaginians that really kind of has them pinned. But the Carthaginians here, well, I built two heavy infantry here to protect me against the potentials of Greece, which probably was a mistake, and maybe another three or so here to protect against this. Well, that is way under what I need. Now, is this survival? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think Carthage is going to be in an okay enough situation that even if they lose their home area, they'll still survive because they're going to probably knock Greece out of this game. But I think the game is essentially over at this point because I think the East's force is powerful enough. We'll see if it works out that way. That's just the feeling I have right now. Now I've got to pull a couple of these chits and we'll see uh, you know, what kind of additional objectives they get. So far, nobody's been able to achieve their bonus objectives yet. Well, for the objectives that people have in their hands, I can't remember what they are. They're all flipped over. Okay, Greece wants Asia Minor. So do Car so does Carthage. Nobody, the only guy who can have it doesn't. But what was the, kind of the cool pull this time was this N. This one will produce potentially victory points right away. Control of any one of the following independent territories. The Sicilies, Germania, Chesnesis, or Rhodes plus Crete two points each. So if I can get the uh, Malta, I'll have the Sicilies uh, because I have the other islands here. That'll give me two two victory points, which is kind of a nice situation. I gotta try to remember to do that. I keep forgetting to take Malta. That's an extra buck. Not Malta itself doesn't produce it, but getting the territory would, and I haven't been collecting that, as well as boosting the GOP value a little bit. But this is gonna be a rough turn to gain anything for. For the Easterners, uh, they want something way over here. Maybe they'll get it eventually, but it's not going to be worth a lot. And remember, these are only GOP points. These aren't victory points. Um, the original set was pure victory points. Well, I'm sorry. The Sicilies one is two pure victory points if uh, Carthage can get that. That's much more valuable than the GOP point ones. Of course, at a buck each, they seem almost, you know, a tremendous bargain because you might just fall into something that you already have. All right, well, we'll go ahead and we've got the regular order here. This is based on the victory points, of course. Carthage is gonna have to take the first move. Well, uh, we've pushed our way a little bit into turn six here. We've done the Carthaginians and Eastern first actions. The Carthaginians went, grabbed uh, Macedonia and moved down here into the Peloponnese, taking that as well, shifted their navies over into place to help defend them. The problem is they can't really do anything anywhere else. They could swing this army up and go take the Italian territories, but then that would free the Greeks where they are. By leaving this army where it is, they're kind of in a position where they've got the Greek main army frozen and they can take things here. Now, how much can they take? That's hard to tell, but if the Greeks come out of Athens itself, they're in trouble. In Athens, it's about an even fight, and Carthage doesn't want to have that. 
they want to strip territories away. You can see they've already knocked uh, Greece's. Now, I'm not going to knock Greece out of the game if they fall below turmoil. It's only because Rome's not in the game, basically, and I don't have a way of handling that. Um, over here, things are kind of weak, and it's quite possible that this army here in Rome, it doesn't need a leader. It can move out and, and do things without it. This isn't like Imperium Romanum, which I see there's a review up for and bonuses for that. Uh, you should go check it out. It's under uh, X Legion, uh, Gilbert Collins's uh, stuff. And, and yes, I will get to it eventually. Um, you see, the Easterners made it over into Libya. They got a decent enough roll, like a four, that they could make it all the way here. They built themselves a town here to improve their, uh, well, so they, they could hold it with just the militia, with just the garrison. But the nice thing about Cyrenaica having a town there is that they'll get an additional buck from it. Now, they had enough money to be able to invest like that. Carthage has not had that kind of money. They might this turn, but... Carthage has the advantage of being able to turn some of its cards into money. Speaking of nice cards, this one. They were so hoping, and I thought it might happen, that the East would sail through here. They would have been able to play that ambush and wipe out the East's naval move because they're within three spaces of it. They could destroy that whole big army coming at them. Didn't happen. I, I thought about my situation and realized earlier last turn I had made the plan to march by land and that I was not going to, you know, turn that over. Initially, my thought was, eh, okay, well, I'll give them, you know, maybe a one in six chance of not taking the naval move. But no, they don't want to have these stop chances. In fact, their leader got stopped here. Uh, they're trying to bring up a more active and better leader to finish off Africa with. So things look grim for the Africans at this point. Okay, so for the Greek activation, they paid, they drew their card, a barbarian invasion. We haven't seen one of these before, so I kind of want to go over it. It's kind of a neat little mechanism here. First of all, we got to find the barbarian's table. Uh, I hope it's in here. There it is. Let's see who's invading. Chances are this isn't going to be a big deal. Uh, seven, the Western Gauls. That could be a problem for the Greeks, mostly. Okay, let's see what that's going to be. This is no event if all four Gallic uh, provinces are controlled by players. They're not. The player rolling this receives a Gallic invasion army of a number of barbarian infantry equal to what? Two dice. A lot. So he's going to get eight barbarian infantry points and Just pull those out real quick. And let's see what he can do with them. Each barbarian invasion has its own little special rules. Um, he's going to get a 1 5 leader. Fish one of them out too. Oops, these are tribal units. I want barbarians. Yeah, probably doesn't matter. Hmm. All my Gauls are listed as others. There's a 1-5 Barbarian leader. See, all the Gauls are listed as 2-5, strangely enough. But we'll ignore that for now. Follow the rules here. A bunch of infantry. Now what? Uh, the Gauls are actually always 1-5s according to this. We'll see. Uh, he places the army in any space in mainland Gaul and undertakes military operations with this army in addition to his normal expansion or recruitment for that activation. If the place space is occupied, uh, the army attacks it, spending movement points. It's treated like a normal army. Okay, it looks like I can use it pretty much anywhere. Uh, So I might be able to do some damage, say here, or cut down and make an attack on Rome, just sweeping by without causing a problem to the Greeks. Take care of that. 
Well, not much of an invasion. I only moved, uh, got a six movement points for them. And I'm set up here, one, two, three, four, five, six. They can't even quite get to Rome. I was hoping to be able to get to Rome or, or one of these Carthaginian cities. Instead, though, I've got them covering this Greek city. That seems to be allowed. I'm allowed to stack with my own uh, country with them. So they've become kind of barbarian hirelings to defend my city, our town, which, you know, takes at least one option away from the Carthaginians. Uh, they could move up, and in fact, I could leave one, two, three, four, five, six. I could actually leave some of these strength points back here with the Greeks. And I think that solidifies my defenses significantly. All right, on to the Greeks themselves. So the Greeks finished up, well, they took their turn by taking their navy and sailing it after this. And this is the first time we saw this, and I probably should have uh, followed it, but it would have taken a lot of time. Basically, the Greeks move into a space, the Carthaginians withdraw from that space. But they have to make rolls for stoppage. Eventually, they got caught in a non-friendly uh, space where they had to make a roll for stoppage. Meanwhile, the Greeks have to roll for stoppage when they're traveling through the Carthaginian ports. Um, the Greeks greatly outnumbered. It was six, well, it was six to four, uh, three to two fleets, three fleets to two. But uh, that only gives them a plus one. <laughs> And it ended up going kind of poorly for the Greeks. I don't know. I think this was the die roll 4 2. Uh, Greeks getting the lower roll. And that's what we got left one fleet on each side. Mm. Uh, pulled the Romans. They don't get to move. And now, well, now it's up to chance who goes next. Last couple of actions. One, the Greeks moved up. You can see they built a town here in Libya. They've got their leader in place. They weren't able to make an attack. Basically, uh, they could have made an attack, or they could have grabbed Numidia. However, they're trying to position themselves for taking Africa. They'll be able to take Numidia. They have extra garrisons in here, maybe even build themselves a town there. Uh, the Greeks were next, and they're in a, a really crappy position. Uh, they had to spend a buck for their turn. They'd like to catch this fleet, but the chances are essentially nil. They're going to take a chance at it anyhow um, to move up. If this gets stuck here with stoppage, then the Greeks can attack it. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll make that action right now. Um, they slide into place. Taking a quick roll. They were not stopped in their withdrawal, which means we can actually go back here and be more defended. The Greeks don't really have anything they can do at this point. The reason they wanted this fight, might have said, well, Carthage could take that. Yeah, they might. Uh, the Greeks have a galley tech card. They're probably going to end up throwing it because they have the Deus Ex in their hand. Um, but if they could destroy a galley for that card, that's fine. Now, for Carthage's side, they actually have a slight advantage here. They're able to build some more troops with this, these cards. Um, or they could play their alliance with Rhodes and pull Rhodes into the, into the battle uh, field. Remember, they, can, they have a, more access to mercenaries than anyone else, so they can just discard a card and start buying some mercenaries. How valuable that is, though. You know, the numbers of the troops are so high that I don't know how much help that they're going to get out of uh, gaining mercenaries at this point in the game. That's the trouble. I want to clarify why the Greek position was so bad. Uh, it's not just, you know, gee, I have to spend money and take an action. It's that they had to spend money and couldn't take an action. Essentially, they couldn't leave Athens. And the reason kind of came up. Uh, Carthage decided to go all out on Greece. And what they did was... Uh, turned in their two cards, both of which are useful. Uh, the Rhodesian alliance would have given them additional navies, which would be useful against the Greeks at this point, but just sort of a nice to have. Uh, if they can take Greece out of the game largely by taking Athens, they would be in much better shape. So I spent both of them and a lot of money, four bucks, to buy myself a couple of uh, heavy 
infantry units. That allowed me a plus one bonus on the attack. The Greeks responded by paying their remaining bid, two bucks, uh, Carthage didn't bid anything, on siege equipment. They negated the Carthaginians, but the Carthaginians got to attack several times. Eventually they got it down to where they did not quite take the city. Uh, is that minus one, not minus two? Minus two they would have taken it. Uh, but they spent their remainder of their money on getting an additional bonus. They expected to take it this turn. And by taking it, maybe get a pillage off. Maybe get some extra cash. As things stand, this is pretty much at a stalemate. Neither side has the money to play it anymore. And now it's up to the East. The East is the only one with the cards to play anything. Although, the East is technically allied with Greece. They could pass them some money to help tie down uh, Carthage. We'll see. Well, it looks like it's all over for Carthage. Uh, the Seleucids have managed to take Carthage itself, land in Sicily. You could say, well, they still have a lot of territories. Not quite. They have to be able to trace back the home territory in order, uh, in order to uh, collect any income whatsoever. So they have no cash. <laughs> No ability to build troops. And they're pretty much doomed. Their navy's going to be destroyed. And now they just become a husk. Uh, so now the question comes down to, okay, now it's Greece versus the East. Now Greece has no cash. They also can do nothing this turn. So it's up to the East to move. Now, for the East, they can't just, they don't have an army over here that they can launch. Uh, so on their side... They only really have the ability to march against Carthage. I think they have one more action left in the cup, it looks like. Uh, and we'll see how far they can get. With any luck, they'll be able to take uh, Sicily and actually maybe even be able to get into Malta this turn. Uh, they've already taken all of the North African territories. Uh, you can see they're upgrading cities. Basically, they're limited by actions because they have a pile of cash. And at this point, I would say it's probably over for Greece, too. Uh, just as a matter of they cannot face what is essentially the original Carthaginian position added to Greece, added to Asia Minor, when all they have is a little bit more uh, than Greece itself. But we'll see. Well, the Seleucids weren't able to do much more because of the careful retreat of a Carthaginian fleet there. But they have managed to take Sicily. They weren't able to get to Malta. They only rolled a 1 for this guy. They needed a 2, 1 to embark, 1 to disembark. They didn't have that kind of movement. <laughs> Unlikely, but it happened. Uh, so that's where we end up. I don't know how right these numbers are, but I can be pretty sure that uh, the Seleucids are going to be in first place for both of those, which means a big pile of victory points for them. They also weigh up here on stability. We're going to see uh, Carthage dropping further because they don't have their home territory anymore. Uh, but they're just in this state of inability to do anything at all. Uh, they've got some troops here. If Greece gives them cash, Maybe they'll do something, but there has never been an alliance. There certainly isn't a current alliance, so that's disallowed by this game as far as I can tell. All right, well, we'll go through the bookkeeping, see what it all turns out, but I think uh, I think the game's pretty much over at this point. Of course, I thought it was over for Greece earlier, and they survived it, so maybe they'll be able to pull something out. Well, there's something we haven't seen before. Greece has no line of communication back to their homeland, Therefore, uh, forces I think that they have, let me make sure, uh, that they have that aren't able to trace there, that aren't in a town or some such, are going to have to make a quick roll on the attrition table, which could cause up to 30% losses. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's got to be to friendly space in home territory, so really... They're going to lose control of a lot of stuff at this point, too. Uh, do garrisons get affected? No, garrisons do not get affected, so they get to hold on to some of the Sic Sicilian islands, right? All right, that's pretty much end of the line for turn six. Got some elite leaders coming back. 
for people who probably can't really use them. The Greeks still exist. Uh, <laughs> point wise, well, like I said, you got this. You got them earning 44 income next turn. Now, that's a lot. Uh, it, you know, that's they still have enough cash to operate. They could build 20 heavy infantry. They've got their manpower limits, so they probably don't want to do that. But they could build a tremendous force. Meanwhile, Carthage doesn't have the money to maintain their fleets because they will have no cash. So those are all going to be dissembling. They have four of them on the board. That's one of their major strengths right now. The question kind of comes down to who can you know, take the pieces and then what happens? Greece coming marching back against the east. Uh, uh, or, uh, sorry, the east coming marching against the Greeks uh, up the boot. And trying to cover this as well. It's a tricky situation for them because they are fighting on a couple of fronts. The interior lines go to the Greeks, sort of, kind of, you know. Both, uh, both fronts are fairly well separated and in both cases there is the Carthaginian mess, <laughs> right? It's just sitting there not really able to do anything but pick it apart. Um, Anyway, point-wise, we can see the East has pulled ahead to the 40-point line, but Carthage is actually still ahead of them and still generating points. It still has a lot of sieve points because the Greeks have no towns. Um, whereas Carthage actually still has a reasonable amount of towns sitting down here, a little bit there. All right, well, we'll load this one up. Uh, but yeah, I think it's over at this point.